So, Mario, why don't you uh, quick give us a little intro, who you are, what you've done, why people should listen to you, and then we can get into the uh, content here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I've been full-time e-com now for about six years. Uh, I've been running a coaching and mentorship and media buying uh, business for about two and a half years. And uh, primarily was drop shipping until, I don't know, maybe like eight, nine months ago. And then uh, I've made the uh, switch to being primarily POD. Found that, uh, you know, Shine On as a film, fulfillment partner, sorry, that was a tough word, as a fulfillment partner has been, uh, has been awesome. And uh, it's, uh, drop shipping is great, but the operating of a drop shipping business is a real pain in the butt. Um, that said, I made a ton of money last year with it. So did my clients. But I found that, you know, the print on demand model leads you with a lot more tools that you're allowed to use to develop a winner. You know, when you're when you're doing a drop shipping product, right? And I've done you know, about eight figures in drop shipping, okay? When you're doing a drop shipping product, you're selling the same product as everybody else. No matter what you do, no matter how legitimate you run your business, there's gonna be a hundred or a thousand other people selling that product, okay? And you could get inventory over and everything. Your page scores are gonna tank. Okay. Some really nice quick cash. And if you know what you're doing, you can churn through accounts. You can churn through Facebook pages. There's ways to get around it. Okay. I still teach it. And if somebody wants to scale that uh, business model, I'm all over it. But um, man, do I like POD a lot better. Less stress, much easier to get somebody their first six figures and even first seven figures without even a tenth of the bumps in the road. Okay. And when you're talking POD, we're talking shine on, especially here. He's got a nice $50 profit margin, a nice juicy profit margin. And you got all that real estate on that message card, right? So that message card is basically a written sales letter. So you got a lot of different things you can do to develop a product that maybe in its first iteration wasn't a winner. There's a lot of things you can do to develop that into a winning product. But today, what I want to talk about is another technique that works in all e-commerce, which is creative testing. And let's say you're at a break-even product or a small winner, small loss basically the same thing, you can't scale it, where you're really gonna win out, sure, advanced Facebook strategies help, but where you're really gonna win out is by having a creative that's just an absolute game changer. Happened to me in 2016, somebody tagged a picture on Instagram of the watch I was selling, went from two grand a day to 25 grand a day in a week, and I didn't know what I was doing back then either, okay? Um, and Tiffany will attest, you know, we've had three winners with Tiffany, Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, two out of those three, it wouldn't have worked without user generated content. Or in this case, it's not necessarily like user and user as in somebody that bought it. But um, one of them, and I'll tell you what I did, I did down at the Shine On office uh, video. And then Tiffany did a bunch of creative testing on this last one and totally knocked, the, uh, knocked, knocked through the ceiling on this last one. And we'll get into that in the slides. Excellent. And by the way, I totally agree with you on the edge that uh, some of this UGC and creative testing um, can give you. I've seen that in my own campaigns and I guess we'll save that for later. You got some slides coming up, but it can be a huge game changer. I mean, it can take mm -hmm. a campaign where you just have a product that's doing so-so, maybe break even to being highly profitable and scalable like that, just with the change in the creative. So anyway, man, go ahead. And especially with something like this, because with POD and with Shine On, you, for a very brief period of time until everybody copies you, you're the only person in the market selling that exact product. And you're yep. the only person or people team in the market selling uh, that product with your special creative. And that's yep. how you can see, you know, we're looking at like two or three grand days of break even in this picture. And then all of a sudden we're at like a, a six grand day. And that was just when we put the uh, UGC in sort of like halfway through the day. And then two days later, we're at a 30 grand day. And the ROAS at 30 grand was like a three. That's your return on ad spend, okay? So you put dollar in, you get three dollars out, right? Versus the row as down at two or three grand was like around a two, so it was break even, right? So we increased row as at a two from a two grand day to from a two to a three at a thirty grand day in a couple of days. Yeah, that's awesome. And so that was, it, that's a lot of fun, right? Yeah, that's awesome, man. When your volume can scale and your margin scale at the same time, that's pretty freaking incredible. <laughs> yeah, fun, right? So. Yeah, great work. That's awesome, dude. Hey, man, just let me know when you're ready for uh, you oh, yeah, sure. so this, this, will, this will sort of show you, right? So the day before, this was the first day when, uh, you know, Tiffany's at in her little studio at home making all these different creatives, pictures, videos, everything she can think of. And then, you know, she finds one that's getting way better KPIs and everything else. 
key performance indicators, right? We're getting cheaper cost per purchases on it. We're getting better click through rates. Like everything's looking great. And so we pop that in there. Uh, you can literally see when we popped it in on this screen, like about, you know, halfway through the ad account day. And then all of a sudden, you know, we end up doing six grand that day at over three ROAS, only 2,600 spent. Fast forward a couple of days later, and we're at a 30 grand day. It looks like about a two nine ROAS, so pretty much a three as well. And I think um, I think we might have made raised prices by that day too. So the margin might have been even better. That's awesome. Cool. Um, so this is uh, you know the six months uh, with uh, Team Tiffany right here so far this year. So we got a nice little winner for Valentine's Day. <laughs> that one actually went down the best creative. And and the thing with these events like. Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day. You you have to optimize and get your best creative in a very short period of time so you can scale, you know, right before the cutoff day, right? When it comes to Q4, you got a much longer time to hopefully you have a longer time to optimize, unless you find your winner a little bit late. And when you're doing evergreen stuff, you have a much longer time to optimize your creatives as well as your ads, just everything about your business. So in this particular case, um, for Valentine's Day, uh, went down to the Shine Out office, grabbed a grabbed a message card, and uh, uh, paid one of the girls there fifty bucks to to come outside and take some video with me. One of the girls that was packing up for Valentine's Day got our got our skew out there and uh, just did a whole bunch of raw footage. And I think the footage that won was like a five second clip or something where you can just hear my voice going, "Hey, honey, what do you think?" And then it's just her hands with the box open, going, "Oh my God, I love it." Right, so we ran that as a video, and that was the winner there. Right, that is freaking awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you guys did that for Valentine's Day. Yeah, yeah. that and is freaking know, sweet. I was hoping it worked because I was using it as an example. Like, you guys got to test your creatives, and I was using an example live, you know, with, with Tiffany and, and her team, as well as you know other members of the group. And uh, I'm glad it worked, <laughs> you know, because then it motivated her to really take the ball and run with it. I mean, because she's got her own studio making making content and, you know, forget about it. And that's going to pit me just an absolute game changer, you know, for her whole career in e right? that That is awesome. So let's make this practical real quick. You could use right. a sister. You could use a female friend. You could probably use. Maybe not, maybe not in every state, but like, you know, most states probably. Yeah. yeah what? <laughs> the sister joke. Uh, I just uh, you, are you talking about using this to uh, uh, pick up? Uh, is it pick up? Pickup line, what is it? Pickup artists? I don't know what I'm saying. Yes. Um, mothers, uh, grandmothers, depending on the niche. But like, you might, look, people are gonna think you're really freaking weird, so be very careful here. But you might be able to like, at a coffee shop or something like that, if you're not a creep, find some way to you know ask somebody to do some video for you. Right. I think this is awesome. That's incredible, man, That's super creative. Yep. Um, okay, so as you guys are looking here, the Mother's Day winner that, uh, Tiffany and her team found uh, was sort of late in the game. So we didn't even have time to test UGC, but you know, it's such a powerful message card through testing that we just, you know, scaled that one pretty quick. Uh, this time we sort of hovered, as you can see, we hovered there in those like two to five grand days, not able to make this thing work. And then she took some pictures and videos and uh, I don't want to share too much about which one was the winner. I'll let Tiffany talk as much as she wants about that. But one of the creatives she made, not only, um, you know, had better KPIs, like twice as good as everything else, but it really showed the value of this particular product. Um, it really upped its true and perceived value to the to the buyer and really added to people going with the higher price version of it as well. Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of a unique thing too about some of our products is that you don't have to be scared to get them on video because they are typically higher quality. Like there are some jewelry items from other print on demand suppliers where like, I'm not so sure I'd feel comfortable doing that. It might fall apart in your hand while you're making the video. Yeah, you gotta order a couple of them, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> um, and you know, add some super glue to kind of reinforce some of the joints and stuff on there. But that is actually, that is super cool. And I love too, man, you can really see that it was that uh, creative or UGC that really made all the difference. I mean, you were struggling to break through the ceiling here. And then right here, you just take off like a rocket. And so it's the same, I'm asking, it's the same product, same message, all of that. The difference here was just the creative. The creative and then obviously we were willing to spend the ad spend on it, right? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. But but 
it, it got profitable, so you weren't scared to 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 spin the ad spin. That's right. That's right. Right. So like it was the it was the creative really that made all the difference. A hundred. You can see here where you're struggling, yep. and then over here you I mean that looks like a five or a six x on your revenues. I'm, I'm telling you, from a two grand day to a thirty grand day, day, and two, two grand day to a thirty grand day, and what four days? Correct. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Great freaking work. I love that. Yeah, she, I love nailed, that. she nailed it with that creative. It was awesome. That's yeah, that's amazing. Okay. You know, real quick before you get into this, I, I just want to say um, I've done the same thing with just the creative. Like I had a product that was scaling for me, but I wasn't like hitting super high numbers. And um I took some of my own UGC of it. Now it wasn't video, it was it was images just with my iPhone. And it literally made all the difference in the world. I mean, I think I went from doing 20, 30K a day to, to almost six figures a day just by taking pictures of the actual image itself. So it like the creative can make a huge difference in how well the campaign does. So I, I don't know, man, that's awesome. I love seeing this kind of stuff. Good work, Tiffany. Thank you, Michael. All right. Okay, so What's what this? we're looking at here, uh, we'll call it the creative sandbox. I did not coin that term. I grabbed that from a drop shipping course, but it's basically creative testing, right? The only element that you wanna be testing is a different creative. So think about everything else. Uh, you know, if you guys have ever done, you know, science in high school, everything else is the control group. And the only difference that you're testing is the ad creative itself, the picture, the video, um, it could be a different primary text headline as well in the Facebook ad. Usually it's going to be a picture or video that really moves the needle. Occasionally it will be the primary text in um, the headline or the primary text headline of the Facebook ad. And I have had products, especially in drop shipping, where that primary text was the only reason that a product was able to scale because it was very much a, uh, like I had one that was like a quote from someone and it encouraged people to buy multiple and it also, uh, was very much a pain point of 2020. So by having that as the primary text above the Facebook ad picture of this one product last year, that made that was the one time that the, uh, the the headline, the primary text of Facebook moved the needle. But primarily what you're gonna wanna be testing here is the only variable is pictures and video, okay? So this is sort of the uh, minimum sort of spend to be able to buy some data in uh, a reasonable amount of time. If you're up against a deadline, you know, like like Tiffany was with this one, and you know what you're doing, feel free to spend more than seven dollars, as it shows here per ad set. I think we spent twenty five dollars per ad set to buy some data quicker, so we could scale, right? But let's say you're in an evergreen niche, or you're just getting started, and you don't want your spend to get away from you. Um, we're going to do this example with the seven dollar budget. Okay, so I like to run this as an ABO campaign purely because I want I want every ad set spending the exact same amount of money on the exact same days, right? The CBO, Facebook's gonna lock into something, right? So in this particular case, we're gonna do an ABO campaign. At the ad set level, you're gonna choose your best audience, be it a lookalike or an interest, whatever your best audience is for this particular product, okay? And you wanna do at least $7 a day, and you wanna be testing them on the same days. And so right here you see it says UGC one, UGC two, three, four, et cetera. So in the case of, uh, you know, Tiffany's winning product, uh, which was that wasn't a winning product until she did this. It was just a break even product. We I think it must have been 20 or so creatives that I believe we tested at like 25 a day or you guys tested at 25 a day. Yeah. And one or two of them you know, looked pretty good. And one of them did awesome. OK, so ABO campaign, identical budget on the same days of your uh, ad set and identical targeting and one. And the only variable that's different in each of these ad sets is the creative, the ad level, right? Different picture, different video. If you're doing a video that's like a long video, it could be like a 15 second version, a five second version, 30 second version. If that video has, you know, like five or six different like features, benefits, sales, um, you know, pitches in there, you can reorder them and find out which order does the best as well. That's worked out very well for me in the past as well. So, hey, man, I got some questions here for you. Um, trying to think through what uh, our audience might have questions about. So what's ETC? 
Oh, et cetera. Sorry. So there would be you oh, just et five, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, you know, twelve, et cetera, right? Okay. So and then um, you said you tested. Did you say twenty different uh, creatives? Uh, Tiffany, give or take, right? Sounds about right. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. about twenty because we were testing a combination of photos and videos. Um, because we really didn't know what type of creative will actually hit the market and be resonated by the audience. So we wanted to give out as many combinations as possible. Sure. So you had uh, you had um, you had a product that was already showing some promise, right? Mm -hmm. So you just couldn't break through this kind of ceiling. That's kind of what it looked like in the stats anyway. So yeah. then you go and you make twenty unique creatives. Now you said it's a combination of images and videos. Do you do you know what the split was? Uh, it's actually about fifty fifty because we um, and the on the photo side on the video uh, on the photo side is different backgrounds, different way of me like of my hand holding the product and different hands holding the product. Um, because I was doing this by myself, so as you know, I can only shoot it with one hand or the other, and I want to make sure there is a combination of it, depending on people's you know left-handed or right-handed, um, and indoor, outdoor, uh, different lighting, and then okay. very similarly with the videos too. And then with the videos, I wanted to have some more raw videos of just my hand holding it and flipping it back and forth at different angles. And then others I had actually, you know, more of a tripod set up and I was able to manipulate the product with both hands. So it really whatever I can throw at the creative, that's what I did. Okay, awesome. And so you did, you said almost 20 of these. So you're running these ad sets. The ad sets have the same interests. It's one ABO campaign. All the ad sets are in the one ABO campaign. You're running each of the uh, ad sets to the same interest, and you had a twenty. You had a twenty-five dollar budget on each ad set, just because you were trying to get data a little faster, right? right. And yeah. then when it came to the actual creative itself, everything was the same except the image or the video. Correct, and different images and different videos. Yeah, right. So really, all the only variable was the image or the video in Correct. each of the the ad sets okay great and so you just let that run a day uh for a day and then you analyzed results yes and i assume is that what we're looking at here these results from that sure. or sure this is uh i got a couple different examples one from tiffany's project and then the next slide will be somebody else that i literally just started this with so we'll get to that um and that person has already had a brand so they're, we're talking about all sorts of creative we can start testing right so that's really cool all right so in this particular example um you know i would say especially if you're doing the seven dollar a day like i was showing in that other slide i wouldn't say just run it one day i got you want to run it until it gets to set a rule until it gets to your break even point or until it gets to half a break even just really depends on your budget and how many creatives you're running but you want to buy a few days worth of data and then also these creative sandbox are in a winning product. They usually end up being one of your more profitable campaigns because you're testing a bunch of new things. Facebook loves the campaign and you can just start up in the budget within the creative sandbox too, because why not? It's working as an ABO scaling strategy. You might as well just keep up in the budget and duplicating and making maybe even small variations to your current winning creative. And, and then your whole creative testing not only breaks even, but you make money on it. So that's cool. So if you look at this uh, slide here, you can see I sorted it by results. You can see just looking at the uh, the cost per purchase line uh, to the right of results. You can see, you know, I think we were getting auto bid purchases for somewhere in like the high 30s before she did this creative testing. And as you can see, um, you know, we got a couple different creatives that are in the 20s. We got uh, two that are right at 20 and one of those that sort of took off. So what you want to do at that point, once you find a creative that's getting you much better cost per purchase than everything else, you want to go ahead and grab that post ID and duplicate it right into your scaling campaigns or start brand new scaling campaigns with that and just crank up the budget and then go for a ride. Nice, man. So what's this one? So uh, was this Tiffany here? Uh, this is Tiffany's uh, creative sandbox from this Father's Day run. Right? Oh, I see. So we're looking at the ad set. So each one of these. So this is this is exactly what we're seeing here, right? So mm -hmm. a twenty-five dollars, right? Exactly. So each one of these is a different creative, 
right? And I see that some of these have $35 budget, 75, 200. I assume you uh, were stress testing the creative maybe a little bit and you started raising well, budgets or what's going on there? Comes back to, you might as well scale it, right? So they all started at 25, but then mm -hmm. you know, sort of like, it's to use a to use a pun or something. Let's let's say go ahead and feel free to, to play around in your sandbox, right? So if things are working, there's try a couple different scaling strategies in there. You might as well because you're going to make a profit off of it, and you're building social proof to that uh, to that ad, and you're feeding more data to that post ID. So now when you put it into your scaling campaigns, you know if you've got a couple different ads at the creative level of a scaling campaign, Facebook's going to really try to spend most of it on the creative it knows. But the more money you spend from the get-go and the better results and the more momentum one of these new creative have, you can still have multiple creatives at your ad level, your scaling campaign, and Facebook's gonna let this thing get its fair chance and start spending the right amount of money on it too. Yeah, nice, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Man, so Tiffany, how much work was this? Actually, it was a lot of work. I mean, don't doubt or <laughs> don't kid yourself. Where um, one thing I definitely appreciate is all the stock photos that Shinon gave us. They looked obviously really professional. It wasn't until I started taking photos on my own, I realized just how much work goes into each photo and how many photos you have to throw away to get that perfect shot. So um, all of these photos and videos, it took me about on and off a day together. And I shot it in two separate locations. So I shot it in my house, uh, inside the house, outside the house, front yard, backyard, and then even went to my parents' house um, and shot it in their, inside their house and outside their house. And then part of it, I had my mom hold it and the other, you know, some other creatives, I had my dad hold it. So it's a family affair. <laughs> nice. Uh <laughs> You like conscripted the family there, but so, okay. So it was like one day of work plus, you know, the testing and all that kind of stuff. But I mean, uh, what, how much revenue did you end up doing on this? Uh, it's like a buck 90 now or something. Um, they're still getting sales. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, and I assume your margins were what? 25%, 30% somewhere around there maybe. Yeah. So, so this is worth it. Right. Facebook's under reporting. Right. Right on this too, because the whole iOS thing. So if you see a $20 cost per purchase, more likely it's probably a 14. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, uh, you know, one day's worth of work plus all the testing, you don't want to, uh, uh, you know, undervalue that plus the time in the campaigns. But I mean, it sounds like you made 25, 30, 35 grand. Plus it's still kind of bringing in some sales for you. So yes. totally freaking worth it. Absolutely. And honestly, I'm going to do it all the time for every product now. Um, you know, it's part of our discovery process. We, um, you know, as Mario mentioned in back in Valentine's Day, he did it for us. And we saw the, like the spike of our product going from just a normal image or even like a simple, you know, even with a luxury box versus what he did on the creative side to that just short ad uh, or short video made a huge difference. Um, again, Mother's Day, we didn't have the time. So this time we were, you know, we believed in the product and we were losing money and barely, barely making, e uh, breaking even. We we're thinking, gosh, you know, this, this has so much potential. What can we do? What can we do that's different? What can we do to really show it off? Because as much as the stock photo looks good, um, it wasn't until, honestly, I got the, sample uh, product in my hand and I opened the box, which is the normal paper box. Um, and I didn't realize the product actually came with a black velvet pouch. And that was not something featured on the product page or anywhere in, on Shine Now. So that was a nice addition. And I was able to feature that in the video as well. Um, so and by just holding, hand holding the product, I, you know, I felt the weight, I felt the color and just really what it, it felt and looked like. And it actually had so much more higher perceived value than what it really was on the photos and on the stock photos, on the stock videos. So I think really the product itself obviously also came through from my videos and photos because it was a quality and it is a quality product. Yeah, that's awesome, man, good good work. That's so freaking cool. I love to see you, you're just knocking it out of the park. 
<laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's, exciting. That's awesome. So what is this one, Mario? Yeah, so this is uh, this is another member of the Shannon community that just, uh, you know, we just started working together maybe a week or so ago. And he's got an awesome brand. And I can't wait to play around with uh, everything that he's got. But long story short, he's got something like a thousand looks reviews with pictures of people wearing or using his favorite product, his best-selling product. So what we simply did here is he's going to have – probably by the time this thing's done, he's going to have hundreds and hundreds of pieces of UGC in this sandbox. And by doing that, I hope to be able to triple his brand by finding a couple of good creatives and then just, you know, scaling them to the moon. So this is after just, you know, like after a week of playing around, uh, just testing some new creatives. And I think the best one so far is like a user submitted picture and then he zoomed in on it so you can really see the product better. And that zoomed in version did better than the first iteration. So that comes back to sort of playing around in your creative sandbox. Don't feel like, okay, so you got something that's working. Don't feel like that first iteration of it's your only chance it's going to work, right? Try to think about different ways that you could improve upon it. Test five different, you know, second phase ideas in your creative sandbox when you have the time, right? When you're up against the gun, you just got to find that creative and scale and hit your target. But, um, you know, in this particular case where he's making sales year round and looking for the best creatives for Q4, um, he's got the time, a luxury of time to be able to test creative after creative after creative. And then, as you can see, it's actually doing community building for him within his brand. So now that he's posting UGC in his paid ads, instead of just sort of like a stock photo, people are commenting in his ads with, with their own uploaded content. Yeah. And so that's actually even better. So don't, you know, when you're at scale and maybe you got VAs doing your moderation or something of your Facebook page, um, you know, Get in there and, and check for comments because there was uh, I had a seven figure drop shipping product early last year that had I not just sort of bruised uh, perused through the comments I wouldn't have found this wonderful like five second video of a woman demonstrating the product that ended up being our winner in a in a big big way so this um you know this user generated content in this case this this is truly user generated content because he's built a brand over the years. His his looks is asking them for a review. They're sending in a review with a picture of themselves with the product. And now he's got all that UGT to test in his ads, which then brand builds even more and snowballs, as he said right here, into even more UGC being submitted. So this is, uh, you know, this is much easier work at this point. You know, granted, he's putting in all the hard work to build the brand. And when Tiffany has her, herself multiple branded stores and, and the niches of her choice, she'll be able to have the luxury of time and to do stuff like this to get more UGC into her um, then ecosphere, if you will. Man, when you can get users, when you can get your customers to create the UGC for you, yep. that's that's pretty freaking incredible. Put, put my job off of a picture a 16 year old kid took in, in uh, Germany in 2016. That's Just awesome, dude. Tag me an Instagram picture. Uh, I was doing free plus shipping watches. Tag me in a picture of the watch, put it in my ads. 25 grand days. Quit a week later. Quit the job a week later. <laughs> you know? That's awesome, dude. Yeah.